There we go. Hey folks, this is Brooks with Character Design Forge, and as I mentioned at the end of the last video, we're moving into a new space, which means a new office, and that's coming along nicely, but it's nowhere near complete. There's no acoustic foam to take care of that echo, and it's going to be great, but it's definitely not qualified to be called finished. Moving really does that to you, really no matter how far you move or how often, it just throws everything into the air and for a while into a perpetual state of transition. And that's kind of the theme of this video, an antidote in some ways to the pressure that we might feel as artists from the outside looking in on everyone else. So what do we see? We see a lot of finished work, a lot of quality work, and a lot of work in general portfolio-ready pieces, fan art for the thing that was just announced two hours ago. And consciously or not, it might skew our own view of what we need to be putting out or what's expected of us. For example, one look at an art of book might make you think that a concept artist is constantly making rendered, beautiful pieces, but in actuality, they might be making incredibly rough, functional iterations on things like clothing or expression things that are required for the project, but probably aren't as exciting as a big piece of splash art or big poster of the characters in an action set piece. They're still doing their jobs as paid artists, it just doesn't have anything to do with clout. The other side of things that I'm pretty familiar with trying to put videos out every week is that frequency often demands finality. Whether it's ready or not, that thing needs to be finished for this deadline. And perhaps the amount of time that you had in the first place dictates that you are working towards a much more modest finish because of the deadline than if you had more resources available. How many videos do you watch of someone making something and they say something along the lines of, if I had more time, with more time, I could make something that's more X, but for now, I'm happy with the way that this turned out. Anyone on day 25 of a month-long challenge knows what it's like to sort of triage the time and energy that you have to get something out, even if it's not something you're 100% happy with. So with that in mind, here's some work that I've done. It's really hours worth of work that either I wasn't particularly happy with, it didn't end up going anywhere, or it's just really too early on in the character design process to really be ready. And it might be stupid of me to share things that aren't polished into Instagram-worthy chunks of content, but maybe in some backwards way this can be empowering to you too. Here's a character design that I'm actually really excited about. I like the progress on her so far. The simple fact is that it's still too early. I have sort of one idea that I like, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the character is ready for prime time. The healthiest thing to do would be to keep iterating and try some more things out, and to test the character's ability to perform the way that you would hope. This character is a continuation of an idea of a sort of game warden, a maven caretaker of animals and creatures. One idea involves her training an apprentice to do the same work that she does. Her story is one that interconnects with the wanderlumens a bit, which might make some sense with the lantern on her tail. What's funny is actually the last time that I shared anything about this character in a previous iteration, it was in a video that was about the times when drawings just don't work out. She has a lot of things going on, so it's very easy for her to fall into a sort of too complicated or esoteric territory, and that's what I'm working on resolving, and probably why she's come up twice in a less than completed manner. Sometimes the reasoning you can give for the work is really straightforward, and in others like this block of work, it's incredibly roundabout. This started with me wanting to revisit the Dire Knots idea from a few years ago. Since the option for animated series didn't end up going anywhere, I felt confident in being able to revisit them. I started with this little green cloaked character of Myra, but with some immediate changes. First of all, I already have a young red-headed bucktooth character in Parcel. That just happened to be a little bit of overlap from a few years ago. Second, her energy blades are just too close to Wasabi's from Big Hero 6 for me to be comfortable keeping them. This video really is just the ugly, unfiltered stuff, and I'm not saying you can't ever have something that resembles something else. But instead, I liked the idea of her being a little more Scandinavian-inspired. So really thickly braided hair, and new mittens that sort of resemble crochet hooks. At first, I was trying to get it to work where there were hooks appended to the outside of her arms, but it works so well to have these hookshot gloves with braided tethers and it has a whole crocheted theme tying it together. This image, however, you might recognize as the trading card from the last backpack, and frankly it stands as my least favorite card illustration to date. 
And let me say this, a good part of the work in this video being sort of meandering and not having real completion comes from the nature of the work. But there are huge factors personally of dealing with COVID winter, the situation that ended up making it best for us to move, the move, and dealing with burnout along with deadlines. That makes it so the conditions where something were made have a huge impact on their quality. Nothing is created in a vacuum, and I think it's interesting to see what someone's best looks like when their energy is all divided up instead of focused. A little more story with Myra here, and part of why this is so meandering is that her news story is as part of a mining crew that is stranded on an ice planet. So that character from a few weeks ago that I'm really happy with, with the arms in his head, is also part of this crew. I wanted this illustration to be like her dropping in on an undiscovered ice cave. The execution, however, leaves a lot of the colors very flat and muted, as I wasn't able to take the time to really figure out what the lighting conditions in these beautiful glacial caves is like. So while this did make it on the card, I'm not exactly stoked to share this particular piece anytime in the future, and it doesn't meet my personal standards of really vibrant art. Next up, we're just gonna keep airing the dirty laundry. What started out as a Pikmin fan art stream over on Twitch became me pitching ideas for a potential Pikmin 4, and I ended up making this father-daughter captain team that uh, I like the designs of too much. And I'm thinking to myself, why shouldn't I keep it? I am currently thinking about making the daughter captain here a little taller, giving her some overalls and a pickaxe, and repurposing her to act as Myra's mother. So we'll see how that goes. Or maybe I'll keep pitching this as a Pikmin concept. Work in progress no matter what. I think it's fun as an artist to have these half-made ideas that you can sort of keep in your junk drawer for later and repurpose and remix to your heart's content. I think that if anything, looking at this stuff reinforces to me how valuable it is to have exploratory phases in your work of sketching and experimenting and most likely failing. When the deadlines are too tight, uh, a lot of that gets very condensed and the rush becomes how or in what way can I get this out as economically as possible. That's a reality that every artist faces from time to time, but for me when I see it as a pattern, I want to work toward improving that. It's actually very similar when I see newer artists who are taking work all the way through to being completed. They've done inking and coloring and rendering, and they're doing this frequently, but they aren't spending any time to purely sketch and learn and improve, and there isn't as much progress in skill level as you might hope. And I think the biggest cause of this is wanting to have something to post or share. Having an external proof of being an artist instead of doing the work that makes you a better one or makes for a better project down the line. And this is not me scolding in any way, it's the balancing act that I deal with here and a lot of folks struggle with it. But it's also what makes me the most excited for the bigger projects like the Stormfellers animated pilot that I can chip away at in increments and work on over time, not just get it out in a week. And I also want us to do what we can to relieve some of the stress of needing to have something to show for what we've done. Because sometimes it's just as good or even better that you tried and failed at something privately, but you learned something or had an enriching experience doing so. I'll have May's Biko's backpack to show you next week. There's actually a pretty fun project and video behind that one. And I can't wait to show you those things like the new office and those bigger projects. I just don't have something finished this week. And I think that maybe, just maybe that's all right. I hope that this video struck the right nerve with the people with feelings similar to this. And if you could, I'd love if you left a comment of any kind. It doesn't exactly need to be insightful, but comments do seem to help with YouTube and all of those things. We're never going to be the top channel around here, but it is always nice when the videos can get in front of more folks. You can get my course Learn Character Design at learncharacterdesign.com, and you can support over at patreon.com slash bageldenizen. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok at bageldenizen. Thank you so much for watching, and have fun creating. A meta note here, Brooks, why didn't you just take some time off? Take all the time that you need, we'll be here that kind of statement is always very nice to hear and the sentiment behind it is great. The problem is that perhaps you individually will be here, but the audience as a whole and the algorithm more specifically will not be. I've found that in the past when I've needed to skip an upload, whether it's to a medical emergency or uh, some other reason like that, that uh, it ends up punishing the, the progress or wh whatever, the, just the, the overall bottom line 
uh, across the month. And if I can be incredibly frank for a, a brief second and then never think about this person or situation again, we went through so much uh, displacement with this move that at its core was not based on any kind of failure on our part to be good tenants or to pay on time or anything like that, even during a time when even evictions for not paying uh, are, are on moratorium, that I just felt like missing work or skipping or failing at some point uh, in this sphere was one more thing I just didn't want sort of taken away from us, if that makes sense. Onward to better and bigger things. We are much better off and I'm excited to see what the future holds.